What is going on you guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to be learning how to create these cards that Apple loves to use in their apps, how to configure them like the one you see here, and more importantly, when you tap on it, how to open up more content about it with a cool looking animation. So here you saw the card kind of came forward and went back slightly and then the content slid down. So basically the card does a pop out animation to reveal its associated content. So pretty cool looking design, uh, fairly loved by Apple. Clearly they use it all over the place. So we'll, we'll take a look at how to put this together uh, using a framework. I'm gonna have a later video on how to do this from scratch. So that said, make sure you destroy the like button as always, helps out the video and channel at large. Hit subscribe if you're a returning viewer and have been enjoying the content. Get Xcode ready, get excited. Let's dig into some cards. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna begin by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We'll stick with the app template and I'm gonna go ahead and call this highlight cards. Go ahead and continue. We'll save it to our desktop. And we need to do two things to set up the project before we get into writing our code. So the first thing is we're gonna to go to our XE assets here and we're gonna right click and create two image sets. The first one is gonna be called icon and the next one will be a background. And I've gone ahead and grabbed the Flappy Bird icon from Google Images, as well as uh, the game's kind of background. So we're gonna go ahead and drag these guys in, and we're gonna be using these on the card we're gonna use as an example. And the next thing we wanna do is bring in the framework that I mentioned earlier in the video that we're gonna use to uh, create these cards. So we're gonna use uh, CocoaPods to bring it in. So open up uh, Terminal and CD into your project. And we're gonna do a pod in it. And let me also expand terminal a little bit. Once that returns, you're gonna do open pod file. And in the pod file, I believe the pod is called cards. That's with an S and it's plural. Make sure you lowercase your P. And go ahead and do a command Q and text edit to close it out and run pod install. And while that's running, you can go ahead and also close Xcode here since we're gonna open up the workspace. And it uh, looks like it installed fairly quickly there. And now we can say open the name of the project .xc workspace. All right, let me go ahead and close that panel. Let me expand our Xcode window to give ourselves a little more room to work. And we're gonna be working in the view controller. So let's open that up. And let me also bump this font size for everybody. Okay, cool. So let's pick a simulator here and let's go ahead and hit that run button. Make sure everything is compiling after installing those pods. Make sure that the simulator loads up, which it does like so. And let's create some cards. So we of course need to import cards first, which is the name of the framework. And the cards framework actually allows you to create multiple types of cards, but we're gonna look at the one that's uh, most common, which is known as a card highlight. And let me actually hit the pause button so my computer fan doesn't decide to be loud because of the simulator. But basically we're gonna create a card as follows. We're gonna say card uh, is a card highlight. And basically in here, we're gonna just configure a card highlights and it takes a frame and it's gonna be zero from the start. And we're gonna assign the frame and view did load in just a moment. Uh, and the next thing we wanna do is return the card down here. And this is where we're gonna configure everything. So first we're gonna say the background image is a UI image named background. I'm gonna copy and paste that. And the next one is going to be icon. 
and this is going to be a UI image named icon, which are the two images we brought in. Then we're going to want a card dot title. Um, and we're going to call this um, play. Let's see. Uh, be my high score. Let's go with that. And we're gonna go and we're gonna assign the item title. And we're just say Flappy Bird. We're gonna say the item subtitle. And we're gonna play, or we're gonna assign it to uh, play the original game. And I think it's probably sufficient for now to just get a a glimpse of what this is going to look like. So in view to load, we're going to say add sub view. We're going to say card. And we're actually going to override view did layout sub views. Call super view did layout sub views. And we're going to give the card a frame right in here. It's going to be a CG rect with a X of zero, a Y of the safe area insets dot top, a width, which is going to be the entirety of the views width. And the height will keep as the, whoops, the height will keep the same as the width, so it's a square. And let's go ahead and hit Command R and let's see what this looks like. All right, beautiful. So we have our card, we have our background image, we have our text here, um, which is line broken, of course, because we added the backslash uh, new line. We have the item title and the item subtitle. So a couple of things to take note of. The first thing is the black uh, on the background isn't as uh, legible, um, as well as the, the font size here is kind of small and we never really set the view button title. So uh, what I want to go over next is you can customize all of this. So card, um, we can set the button text to, let's see, get. Let's see, the title size we can specify or we can specify other aspects of the title directly, but let's just do uh, the title size for now, which is a CG float. We'll say it's 32. And we're gonna say, let's see what colors are available in here. Card dot, there's a tint color, background color, text color. Let's go with white. And we're gonna say item title size is going to be, let's say, I don't know, 18. And let's leave the uh, item subtitle as is and just go ahead and run this. And let's see what it looks like. All right, so now we see that this looks a little better. Uh, this is still white, but this item size is a little larger now too. And let me actually go ahead and let's see if there's a blur option on here. I believe there is if memory serves. So there is a shadow blur, the amount of the blur the, the, up for the card's shadow as described right below. Let's go ahead and say 20. And actually, instead of guessing what is available to us, if we go ahead and command click inside of a card highlight, you'll see that it's a subclass of a card. And there are properties on here like the title size, the item title. Let's see what else is on here that's of interest to us. There's a subtitle size. You can have an icon radius. So the point is there's quite a few things you can configure in the card highlight itself, but actually if you command click into the card, which is the super class of this card highlight, there's even more stuff you can configure. So there's shadow blur, shadow opacity, and each of these has a nice comment explaining, you know, what it is. Um, let's see, what else is interesting in here? There's a background image. You can have a radius of the card itself. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So point is you can customize it. So let's talk about something else that's interesting. So how do you actually uh, get interactions from tapping this card? Well, right now when you tap and nothing is happening. Uh, and the takeaway there is you can actually present another controller with an animation if you tap on a card. So let's say we create a, another controller down here called, uh, let's call it card content controller and it's gonna be a view controller. And we're gonna implement view did load and I'm just gonna go ahead and save the views. Background color is link, which is just a blue color. 
whoops, link, just like that. What you can actually go ahead and do is on the card, uh, you can say, we can actually do it in view to load. We're gonna say card and we're gonna say should present, rather let's see, should present this and the full screen. So basically we're gonna say should present card content controller from self and full screen specifies the way that the presentation of course looks. So let's take a look at false to start. And if you go ahead and run your app now and we click on this, we see that this actually, the card actually uh, gets a little smaller and you get this like drop down style of your other content controller. And if you had stuff in here, of course it would show appropriately. Uh, let's go ahead and make this true. And let me also go ahead and add a label to our content controller so we can see what that looks like. So we're gonna say 20 view.safearearinsets.top view.frame.size.width minus 40, so it's centered, and a height of 100. And we're gonna say view, add subview label, label.text alignment is centered, and label.text is hello world. And let me also increase the font size for the sake of it not looking totally uh, unpleasant. So we're gonna say 21, and we'll say a weight of semi-bold. So go ahead and hit run. If we click on this now, you'll see that the full screen card pops up. You'll notice that it actually does take care of the safe area down here. So if you had a tab bar, if you had, uh, in this case on a you know, larger iPhone, we have our little home indicator here. Uh, but this is essentially how you can present cards uh, pretty identically to how the App Store does it. And the last thing I'll mention before we wrap up here is you can imagine the card has a bunch of different events uh, associated to a user's tab and things like that. And you can actually get all those events through a delegate. And you can see here the type of this delegate is a card delegate. And we're gonna assign it to self. Let's go ahead and extend the view controller. And we're gonna say it's card delegate. And let's click into this card delegate and look at all the functions we have available to us. There's uh, a couple in here. So there's did tap inside, uh, will show, uh, et cetera, et cetera, will close. Basically, if you wanna update anything or if you wanna, uh, if you wanna notify that your other view controller, the card is about to dismiss itself, maybe you wanna show an ad, maybe you wanna reload your data, so on and so forth, you can do all that by getting the events in here. And uh, I think they're all optional. Yep, all of these functions are optional. So none of them are actually required. So you can basically cherry pick out the things that you want to use and not use. So there you have it. That's how you can create a card in your apps fairly simply with this framework. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing a video on how to do this from scratch as well. Uh, this should go away now, now that, there we go. The error should go away now that we've conformed. So yeah, if you haven't hit that like button already, make sure to do so for the YouTube algorithm. Comment down below if you like this design. Uh, I find it very interesting. Uh, I think I've seen Apple use it in quite a few of their first party apps. So I'm curious to know what you guys all think. Uh, leave any suggestions down below. Uh, if anything, say hi for the YouTube algorithm in the comments. Uh, subscribe while you're at it if you enjoyed the video and look forward to daily Swift uploads. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.